This is the new Range Rover Villar SV Autobiography Dynamic Edition. Essentially, it's an SVR version of the Villar. So it's a baby brother to the Range Rover Sport SVR. It's got the same V8 under the bonnet. Is it any good? Well, I'm gonna tell you about that in this video. Let's kick off this video by testing out the new Range Rover Villar SVA's performance. And to do that, I'm gonna use my specialist timing gear and see how quick it can get from naught to 60 miles an hour. I've got a five liter supercharged V8, 550 horsepower, 680 Newton meters of torque, an eight speed automatic gearbox driving all four wheels. All I'm gonna do is hold on the brake, rev it up a bit and release the brake. Here we go. Oh, feels quick. That's 60. Just boom, <laughs> like that. This Range Rover Velar SVA did 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. That's actually really impressive. But there's more to this car than just the engine under the bonnet. All right, let's talk about the design. And I think you know where we're going first, the exhaust, because this is a major upgrade over the normal Velar. You've got quad tailpipes. This shiny bit here is just a surround bit in there that is a proper exhaust pipe in each and every one of them actually so it's sort of forgivable this version of the Velar also has slightly redesigned bumpers to make it look more sporty you've got your sv badging there as well other than that it's pretty much like the normal Velar, but that's no bad thing it's a great looking suv the sv autobiography also gets a contrasting black roof beefier side skirts to make it look a little bit more sporty then at the front you get a redesigned grill and bumpers, they're deeper, they're wider, they're meaner, and the badge, it's got some knurling. I think that's a bit unnecessary, but other than that, I do like the look of this thing. You'd have to pay for it though. The car starts from 86,000 pounds, there you can save almost six grand off one. Now, if you wanna see how much money you can save on car, I'll just compare cars, prices, and deals, and stuff like that. Click on the pop-out banner up there to download our app. It's free, surf through it and check out different things, like my videos, do it. Here on the inside, there are some more upgrades over the standard Velar. You get sport seats, and they are nice to sit in, quite body hugging actually, and they have diamond quilting, and the leather is not just any leather, it's Windsor leather, which sounds sort of royal, doesn't it? You get some aluminium pedals, you get aluminium illuminated Range Rover kick plates. There is also aluminium here in the door. You get a bespoke sporty steering wheel, feels quite nice, and aluminium gear shifter paddles, also, on the rotary dials to control the infotainment system and the climate control, there is some more knurling. And then you get bespoke SV dials, which also have digital knurling around them. <laughs> What's with all the knurling, guys? I do like this feature, though. The centre of the dial kind of has a graphic on it, which makes it look like brushed metal. I think that's really cool, though. Cameraman Jack isn't quite so impressed, but let's ignore him. Here in the back seats, it's pretty much just like a normal Villar, really. There's a decent amount of space. Though, obviously, you do get the Windsor leather seats, which are lovely, so rear passengers can enjoy that as well. And there's some SV-style sports mats. Also, the SV Autobiography gets a panoramic glass roof, a standard, which is nice. Oh, and look, there's some more knurling. This may be a performance model, but it has a very practical big boot. 673 litres, which is more space than you get with a Porsche Macan Turbo. Trouble is though, I can't seem to find any knurling in here, so it's not feeling quite so special. I want knurling, people. Where is it? At least you do get a power tailgate as standard with this model. Oh, look, and here it is. There's the knurling. <sighs> Thank God for that. This SVA version of the Velar has a lot of chassis upgrades over the normal car to make it more sporty. For instance, you get air suspension as standard and you can adjust the height of that. And it's calibrated to have a firmer feel to it for better road holding. Also, you get fatter anti-roll bars at the front and at the back. The four-wheel drive system, the gearbox, the rear differential have all been calibrated to be more dynamic feeling. And then you get bigger brakes as well. So you've got 395 millimeter discs up front, gripped by four piston calipers, and you've got 396 diameter discs at the back. Well, it's a bit unusual. Let me just check I've got that right. Yeah, apparently that's right. Ah, these have bigger hubs, less actual braking area, but still huge rear disc brakes as well. Though they're gripped by a sliding caliper. Who knew? In order to be able to fit this big, lovely V8 under the bonnet, Land Rover had to severely re-engineer the engine bay to free up space so they could squeeze it in. And I applaud them for trying and achieving it. 
This car comes with an upgraded sports exhaust, though you can run it in a slightly muted mode so you don't annoy your neighbours, though if like me you can press this button and go full on hooligan. <laughs> As standard, you get 21 inch alloy wheels, which is good, though these are the upgraded 22 inch. Now they're a 1200 pound option, but that's because they're actually forged instead of cast, which means they're lighter. In fact, they're lighter by two and a half kilos per corner, which actually reduces what's known as your unsprung mass, which should improve the ride quality and the handling. That means ride quality, and obviously that means handling. It's like journalist gestures. I don't know if you can see this, but there's an under tray covering the transmission and that improves airflow when you're driving really quickly. The normal Villard doesn't have that. The SVA gets dynamic control, so you can do things like set the engine response, the gear shift speed, the steering weight and the suspension. Plus you get some other bits as well, such as a stopwatch for timing your laps. Oh yeah, you can use that a lot. Then there's a G meter, which you can see how much of a G you are or G U is, I don't know, Jeez, no, cut that. Anyway, let's carry on. There's a pedal response meter, which can measure your braking and your throttle. Brake, throttle, brake, throttle, brake, throttle, brake, brake. Ah, you got it wrong. He's trying to show off. I thought it was quite good. This thing can actually send up to 100% of the engine's power to the rear wheels, which means if you turn the stability control off, you can do this at the school gates while you're dropping your kids off. Around all the other children. Bye bye, children. There aren't really that many options available for this car. It pretty much comes fully loaded. For instance, you get Matrix LED headlights as standard, so they can blank out part of their beam so that you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. And they have signature daytime running lights. You also get 20 way adjustable seats with massage function and adjustable side bolsters and a lovely suede roof lining. Now, obviously, you're paying for it because this car costs £86,000, though of course you can save money on one through CarWow. Now, if you want to do that, you can just Google CarWow, dead easy to do. But if you want to save yourself some time, I've actually pre-configured what I think is the perfect spec on this car in our configurator. And I've got some deals back from trusted dealers, which I think are a fair price. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can go directly to CarWow to see those deals for yourself. As with the normal Range Rover Velar, you have poppy outy door handles, which are great. I like that. However, not everything about this car is great. Here's five annoying things about the SVA. Actually, let's start with the name itself. SV Autobiography Dynamic Edition. What's that all about? Why don't they just call it the SVR? After all, you've got the Range Rover Sport SVR, and this has pretty much the same engine. I'll tell you why they're probably not doing it. It's because you get a Jaguar F Pace SVR, which underneath the skin is exactly the same car as this, only it's about 11 grand cheaper at 75,000 pounds. All paint schemes on this car are included in the price. However, there is one that isn't, and it's the one you really, really want. The satin finish, Byron Blue, which looks awesome. Trouble is, it's 6,000 pounds. <gasps> Though, if you buy one of these cars through CarWow, you do save 6,000 pounds, so it kind of covers the cost of that sort of. Being a Land Rover, there is an increased chance that this car will break down. Land Rover doesn't have the best reliability record. In fact, I've got a few friends who own some Range Rovers and Land Rovers, and they are on first name terms with their local Land Rover technicians. While well, the materials higher up in this car do feel pretty premium, those lower down are not befitting of a car that costs £86,000. In fact, they're more like those you'll find in a car that costs £6,000. A Porsche Cayenne Turbo definitely feels more premium throughout. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of a Porsche Cayenne, click on the pop-out banner up there. Now move on. And surprisingly, this car doesn't really give very good economy. In fact, I'm only getting 11.8 miles per gallon, though that's because I have been testing it. <laughs> In real world driving, you're probably going to get more like 20 at best. Annoying thing is though, even though you've got like an 82 litre tank, that means you're going to be filling up pretty much every 275 miles. So for some people, that'll be once a week if you do quite a bit of commuting. Once a week, a petrol station. Ugh. 
Finally then, let's see what this Range Rover Velar SV8 is like to drive. When you're just mooching around town, it's just like a normal Velar. Surprise, surprise. When you've got the dynamic program just in its normal setting, it's relaxing, it's calm. The steering's not too heavy, not too light. Because you've got that air suspension as standard, it's really good over bumps. Being a Range Rover, you sat up high, so you feel superior to other road users. It's good on the motorway as well. It's reasonably quiet, good for cruising. Seats are great, actually for just doing loads of miles in. But then if you need to overtake someone, look, I'm doing 50 miles an hour, I'm gonna floor it. Gearbox kicks down nicely enough, and then that's 70. Then, if you're on the autobahn, <laughs> you're doing 70 and you need to overtake somebody, you floor it, kicks down again, and then you're at 90. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down because this is some corner. It held on. <laughs> Felt it move around a little bit, but it did hold on. It's stable at speed. But what's it like when you hit some tighter corners, when you want to have some fun? After all, that's the whole point of this sporty engine and the upgrades to the chassis. Well, I'm going to put it into the sporty settings now and go chuck it down a windy road. Oh, I love the engine. <laughs> oh, whoa. oh my God. You've got to remember <laughs> that it's a tall car and it does start to get a little bit flighty if you go crazy. Yes, this engine may be available in a Jaguar F-Type, but this is a different beast. Oh! Bloody hell, I've got air in a Velar. I do like the way it moves around beneath you. Even though it does lean a bit, it's playful, it's fun. I think I just laughed through the hole of that piece of camera there, which pretty much says it all. This is a fun SUV to drive, no doubt about it. So then, what's my final verdict on the Range Rover Villar SV, silly name, whatever it's called. Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should shortlist it. You see, while I did have an absolute blast driving it, dynamically, it's still not quite as good or as sporty as the equivalent Porsche or performance BMW SUV. Still, it looks better than all of them, and it is a lovely thing, and I do rather like it. You wouldn't go wrong by buying one, let's just put it that way. Let's kick off this video by testing out the new... Let's start this video by checking out this car's performance. So under the bonnet, we've got a great engine. Under the bonnet I've got a supercharged 5 litre V8, 550 horsepower, 680 newton metres of torque and I, ah oh, cock. It's dead easy, just hold it on the brake, throw the throttle, launch it. Tip. 